Hi everybody, welcome to video 10 where we're going to take the Landsat composite image that we made in the previous video and we're going to use it to compute a new image where each band is actually a band ratio and we're going to do all of this in the image analysis window. So in this video the first about six or seven minutes are going to talk about the concept of band ratios. What is a spectral band and why are ratios important? Then at around minute eight, we'll switch into ArcMap and then we're going to talk about computing these band ratios in the image analysis window and then making a new image where each band in the new image is actually a ratio of the original Landsat bands. So if you already know the theory, you may want to skip to about minute eight and you can jump right into the ArcMap instructions. So let's jump into the overview. Recall that uh, satellite images, a single satellite images, is typically collected in a number of different spectral bandwidths. Each of these encompasses a different part of the electromagnetic spectrum. Landsat, for example, has three bands down in the visible, and then it has three additional bands up in the infrared. And what's important about that is that surface types, surface materials, have different reflectance in each of those wavelength regions. So this is called a spectral reflectance curve, and it shows the fraction of light reflected by grass, soil, and water at each different wavelength, respectively. Okay. So for example, grass is not very reflective in the visible, but is very reflective in the near infrared. Okay. But the one exception to that is this peak here, which actually happens to be in the green wavelength range. So grass is actually reflective in the green, more so than the blue and the red, and that's why it appears green to our eye. So now, but how does a satellite see this? A satellite is measuring specific intervals of this spectral continuum. So let's bring in the satellite bands and overlay them on these spectral reflectance curves. Here's band one of the Landsat. Here's band two. Here's band three. Notice those roughly correspond to the blue, green, and red visible regions. Band four is in the near infrared. Band five is in the mid infrared. And band seven is in the far infrared. So this is going to be the data set that we have to work with when we're interpreting satellite images. This is what we can choose from. Now it may be that you can tell grass from soil perfectly well just by using the visible part of the spectrum. Grass is green, soil is generally brown. Might be you can tell those apart pretty well. But for things that are spectrally more similar, it might be that you need to capitalize on some of these infrared bands. Maybe you have two things, that, two different types of grass that look identical in the visible but are slightly different out in the infrared. So that's where being able to construct a false color image with some of these infrared bands is going to be super handy. Now, in other cases, we may complications may arise because of different levels of lighting of the scene. And this is where band ratios become really important. And I'll start out my justification for band ratios by reminding you that satellites only measure brightness. Okay, They don't actually measure the percentage of light reflected. They just measure the total number of photons that are coming off a different a surface. So a problem arises because it may be that two surfaces that have the same reflectance, if one of them is in a shadow, then it had less light to begin with, and it's going to therefore reflect less light back to the satellite. So let's work through a quick example here. Consider a surface that has two different types of trees. It's got deciduous trees and conifer trees. And we'd like to distinguish those from each other spectrally. Okay. On the, if they're both getting the same amount of incoming sunlight, then we're going to measure a brightness of 48 on band A and 50 on band B for the deciduous trees. 
But the conifers are a bit darker, so we're going to measure 31 and 45, respectively. OK, so now if everything is sunlit, then we can tell these apart because the conifers are going to be darker. Okay, But now consider the case where some of the deciduous trees are in the shadows. The brightness measurements immediately drop to something like 19, okay, which is actually below the conifers. So unless we know a priori where the shadows are, we can't tell actually based just on the brightness measurement whether it's a deciduous or a conifer tree because the level of shadowing is affecting the brightness across this really wide range. Here's where band ratios come in. As long as we measure the ratio between band A and B, that ratio is independent of shadows or the level of sunlight. So regardless of whether it's sunlit or shadowed, deciduous trees always give a ratio near 1, whereas the conifers give a ratio near 0 0.7. So that ratio is going to be a more reliable way to distinguish between these surfaces regardless of shadows. So the next question becomes, given that I have eight different bands for Landsat, or seven bands, what ratio should I pick that are going to best distinguish the surface types from one another? So there's no fast criteria for this. But we're generally looking for the ratios that are going to be the most different. Okay? One way to approach this is to say, I want to find ratios that are going to be very high for one of the surfaces and relatively low for the other two surfaces. So let's start with grass. For grass, I'm going to pick a ratio of band 4 relative to band 3. That should give me a nice high ratio for grass and should actually give me a relatively low or neutral ratio for soil and a relatively neutral ratio for water. All right, let's consider soil next. For soil, I'm going to pick a band ratio of 7 to 1. That's going to give me a high ratio for soil. But for grass, 7 to 1, it's going to be a bit more neutral. And for water, 7 to 1 is going to be relatively small. Finally, for water, I'm going to pick a ratio of band 1 over band 4. Finally, for water, I'm going to pick a band ratio of band 1 over band 5. That's going to give me a relatively high ratio for water, and it's going to give me relatively small ratios for the other. So in summary, here are my choices. Uh, for grass, I went band 4 to 3. For soil, I went band 7 over band 1. And for water, I went band 1 over band 5. Maybe take pause the video now. Maybe jot these down. We're going to be using these once we get into the ArcMap project. OK, so here's our ArcMap project. Um, it consists of this composite Landsat image of the Middlebury, Vermont area. And we've been looking at some farms and some forests right in this area. Now, one thing we notice about this is that due to differences in brightness, it can be hard to tell exactly what is grass versus what is a farm field. And there might even be some water in this image, like this little pond here, that we can't really clearly distinguish from trees. And so part of this is due to lighting issues. And we can use band ratios to get past that. So what we're going to do is we're going to compute three different band ratio images one that's going to highlight grass, one that's going to highlight soil, and one that's going to highlight water. And we're going to do that again in the image analysis window. Here it is. And um, this has a special feature. It's called the function feature. And what, what we can do is you can develop uh, functions and put them sequentially in what's called a function chain so that you can start with a root image, in this case our composite image, and you can insert multiple different functions, and then you're going to end up with some output image at the end. Now in this case, we're only going to do one function, and we're going to insert it right here just above the image. We're going to replace the identity function with something different, 
and we're going to use the band arithmetic function. So it's going to open up this new interface. We want our input to be the, the composite Landsat image. And you can see there's a lot of predefined arithmetic things here, like the normalized difference vegetation index, the NDVI, and then a bunch of other things. But we're going to do user defined. Uh, and we're simply going to write in the expression, we're going to write uh, band 4 over band 3. And remember, this is the, the band ratio that we thought was going to be high for grass. And then I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to hit, and you see now this says band arithmetic function. And I'm going to hit OK again. It's going to execute it. And it's now made this new layer that is actually a ratio of band 4 over band 3. Now, so I don't get confused, I'm going to right click and go to properties. And then I'm going to go to general. And I'm going to rename this B4 underscore B3 underscore grass just to remind myself what the original ratio was and also what I thought it would be high for grass. Okay, now I'm just going to repeat that process. I'm going to highlight the composite image again so it knows that I want that to be my starting point for my function chain. I'm going to go down and click on the add function. Here it is listed as my starting point. I'm going to right click in this function, insert, band arithmetic. I'm going to then choose user defined. And this time, I'm going to input a ratio of B7 over B1. And in case you didn't figure this out, having this actual B is actually critical. You can't just put 7 over 1. You've got to put the B there to tell ARC that, that you want it to use bands. All right, now I'm going to hit OK. And it's all set. And I'll hit OK again. It outputs the second band ratio image. Once again, I'm going to right click that and go on properties and rename this uh, B7 underscore B1 underscore soil to remind myself what it was going to be high in. OK, so why don't you repeat those steps to make our third band ratio image, which is going to be band 1 over band 5. And that's expected to be high for water. I'll pause while you do that. OK, so now I've got my three ratioed image images right there. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to composite these into a new three band raster image. Now here's where you need to carefully take notes. You need to note that the first band of your new image is going to be 1 over 5, the second is going to be 7 over 1, and the third is going to be 4 over 3. And that's going to matter because you don't want to lose track of which is which as you try to display your new composite image. All right, so with that in mind, uh, we'll hold Shift, highlight all of these. We'll use the Composite button to create a new composite raster. And there it is. I'm actually going to go ahead and just save this again. It's temporary in your memory right now. To make it permanent, we right click, data, export data, check that it's going into your correct GG students folder. And I'm actually going to give this a name, which is tells me which bands come in which order. I'm going to call it B15, B71, B43 composite. So, and I'm also going to just give it its root name, which is mid 2002. So I've, I've been thoughtful about the name, I gave it the original root name. And then I, I listed out the ratios in the order that they appear. This is the new band one, band two, band three. And again, we're going to save this as a TIFF, we can leave all the defaults as is. So now that we have this as a permanent file, we'll add it to our project. I'm going to go ahead and just remove all the intermediate files that we had there. And let's take a look at what this looks like and think about the RGB display. One thing I'm noticing right away is that water, here's Otter Creek, 
is turning out bright red. And that's because right now we have our, our band that's the water ratio, so that was band one, um, displayed in red. So probably that should be blue. So I'm going to right click, go to properties, symbology, and I'm going to make band one blue. That was the one that was supposed to be for water. Then I'm going to make um, green is actually going to be band one. That was the one that was supposed to be high for grass. Excuse me, band three. That was supposed to be high for grass. And then I'm going to go make band two red. That was the one that was supposed to be high for soil. So right now, uh, soil should turn out red. Grass and trees should turn out green. And water should turn out blue. Whew, thank goodness. <laughs> now, take a look at this. Look at how these water bodies are popping now that we've used band ratios. Likewise, the soil rich fields are popping and the forests are popping. This band ratio is accentuating everything. And let's just finish by comparing it with our original image. You can just see how all those brightness variations have gone away. And the actual surface composition is very, very obvious. All right, thanks for listening, everybody. Uh, that wraps up videos for this class. And we'll move on next week with a different set of videos. Take care.